so my lips. I'm Dukma. I'm Dukma. According to history, Sierra Leone was found by a, a man named Pedrola Centra, who was a Portuguese. So he founded Sierra Leone and founded the city, Freetown. So he gave the name Sierra Lua. It's come to be modernized as Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is one of those countries who has experienced the ravages of civil war and they really lost a lot. I mean, just in terms of infrastructure, you know, lives, a lot of lives were lost. The, the war was from 1991 and ended around 2001, 2002, so about 10 years. Um, it was quite a devastating situation. When the war broke, no education, all schools closed down. So that is my first experience. I became a dropout. At that time, after one year, I lost my father. So I have no support everywhere again. So when the war hit in Sierra Leone, we ran away from Sierra Leone to Guinea. There we suffered a lot. At the border point, even up to today, I am feeling those pains in my body. They arrested me that I am the gentleman Johnny Paul because we resemble the body, the building, the face, everything. So I was arrested with the Guinean soldiers. They tortured me. Up to today, I'm feeling those pain, this size, this size. So I have that, that bitter experience. But through the help of God, somebody saves me from their hands. And I entered Guinea. I stayed in the refugee camp. Here I met with Reverend Sam Sisi, doing ministry among the Susu people. And so I joined him there, and we started working up to today. So I have a bitter experience for the war. And when I lost my father, no one to help me. Only Jesus Christ rescued me and called me to ministry. So we pray in the war, they came with some children. They captured and women from the south and east. They brought them to the north. They met us here. But what these people, these commandos were doing, was killing these small boys. They killed them. On every morning, they keep two or three or five. For any small crime, they just ask them to stand over there. They, they shoot at them and kill them. So during, during this period, I saved a lot of the life of children, other children they wanted to kill. When I ever talked to the, the commando, he released them. Just seeing the huge need that existed in the country really broke my heart and I wanted to help whatever way we could. Chico, this is the fifth time of Chico to come to this land. It's like we'll record it. And Chico, had the heart desire for Sierra Leone and the social land. Tiko is a good friend of mine, a brother we have met for a long time and we have visited Kukuna four times. And one thing I see the love of God in you for those people, for the social people. Likewise, I, I also get passion for those people because they are not Christians. They do not accept Christ. Their eyes are open, but they are blind spiritually. So I'm trusting God. Through your own effort, we team up together and make these people to see the truth. Yeah, that is the good things I learned from this man called Chico. In 2008, I remember 2008, um, at that time I was at a place called Hastings, um, and I was with one of my pastor, Reverend Mark, when I had a call from somebody and there's a friend called uh, uh, a man named Tico and John by then. Tico is a Jamaican and John I think is from Sweden or whatever, I, I can't remember. Um, they called them, I think they have some, they want Pastor Mark to rescue them. So Pastor Mark was with me 
And so Pastor Mark asked me to go with him. So I came to meet with um, Tico from Jamaica. When you mention to a typical Sierra Leonean, when you talk about Jamaican, you are talking about people that do smoke marijuana, the ganja, the ganja. That's an idea, even when I was small, growing up, when you talk about Jamaican, you're talking about jam, the ganja, people that smoke weed. Um, when I first met with Tico, my ideology about the Jamaican, that there are people that smoke ganja, so when I met Chico, Tico, Tico, I think it's, it's a different Jamaican. It's a different Jamaican. I'm not saying it to flatter him, but I, can, I discovered one thing that he loved the Lord. And uh, he, he, for me, he showed me another picture of a Jamaican. That they are not only Rastafarians, which is the basic that we have when we're small, but also they are Christians. Yeah? And I think Tico is one that helps to change my mentality or my mind about Jamaican. So Mr. Tito is a nice man. Every year he comes with good people. He's our friend. He's my son. He, uh, he's a friend of the children. Of course, when they come from the school, as as Mr. As, as he is already here, the, the children will go around him. They know his name. They know the songs. He taught them a lot of Christian songs. And the children always talk about him. I'm a Sierra Leonean, but I've never had a name, a place called Kukuna. It was by Tiko that I was able to know that place. I remember when, when we met and then he was talking about Kukuna, Kukuna. In fact, I was surprised that for, for somebody to come way to Jamaica to see the Lord, ask him to come to a place Kukuna and the Susu people. Um, well, at first I was very skeptical, but I think I managed to, to visit Kukuna with him. And I think Tiko is trying to to make some impact in Kukuna. And I think he's doing a good job. In working with the Susu people, our main objective is to share the gospel of Jesus with them. And um, four main areas in which we'd like to do that uh, through sustainable development is church planting and education, clean water and sanitation, medical outreaches, and farming. We identified those areas because those were the main Areas that stood out to us and that the locals had shared with us. There's a lot of need for just proper uh, medical resources um, in that village. Um, definitely for education and farming is, is just the way of life of the people. So we believe that in investing in those we can empower the people and see more of a sustainable development and growth taking place in addition to sharing the gospel through those areas. Since coming here over the past 10 years, I've definitely seen a transformation in the spiritual atmosphere. Just really feeling the atmosphere being a lot lighter. Um, before it was a lot heavier and just, just the spiritual oppression was a lot thicker. Um, I'm definitely experiencing more joy and seeing that on the people a lot more peace. And I can see the church advancing, just working and talking with a few pastors. And even in the village with one of the pastors we've been working with, a lot more breakthroughs are taking place. For so long, Christianity has played a very big impact in this country. The 
because many that were astray are now in the better way because of Christ, because of good leadership. We decided to choose the social people to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so for 15 years, I'm working with a local missionary named Reverend Sam Sise. He is staying in a Lunge town. And we have church, a church in Lunge, in Kamayen, in Tambaka. We have these three churches and we are doing more in the vineyard in the region. And so we have been working because according to the scripture, the Bible told us that there are other sheep that are not of the full. So we must go out at all costs to bring them in. So that is our motto. That is our vision to reach this unrich people. To reach the social people, the unrich people, is not an easy task. It takes the grace of God because we are honoring the, the statements of our master. He told us to go and preach the good news. And that is why we are going out with all these bad experiences, but we trust Almighty God to bring them under the shepherd who is the Lord Jesus Christ, which I am serving. When the Christianity came, uh, actually it was through the, 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 the resettlers and a tribe known like the Creus. Um, it was personalized. It was like Christianity is for the Creus. So all those were they personalized Christianity. I think that was one of the reasons that Christianity was very slow to grow in this nation because of they personalized it as their own religion. Whilst African traditional religion is practiced by other tribes like the Timine, the Mende, the Loko, the Limbas, and this other language. Mm. Uh, but when you look at my nation, even though for now Muslims are in the high, we have about 70 percent, 70 and above percent of Muslim population and about 20-25 percent Christians and then you have the other ones who are not Christian and Muslims. What we fail to do, the Muslim people are doing it, developing their people, building schools, giving them scholarship, going out to study, making some universities in the country under Islam. So that is why Islam is spreading. When they come in the Christendom, only few that can say, oh, I will support you, I will help you to give you scholarship. People are trying on their own, but some, when they come in some part of the country, there is no help. I'm a bit pity over the situation of the church. Because being we are trying to evangelize to these people, their places of worship are more better, they have better, comfortable, than the church. If you go to the church, you will see the nakedness of the church. You know, the people we are trying to evangelize, the, the Muslim people, some will come, they will say, oh, this church is not comparable with our own place of worship. Because the church has insufficient benches, not good rehabilitated. You know, these are the things that some of these youths denied coming to church. But the elders, because I've been in the church on one occasion, someone came to the church and said, oh, this church is not properly neat. So I'll leave this place and, and leave this place. And the other thing, children going in this church, you know, will help them to do better things. They will leave this church and go to a free town. They attend churches in free town, but when they come, to the village, they will not attend our church. I will ask you why they are afraid of their parents. If they come to the church, they will deny them some of their rights in the homes. Maybe they will not give them food. I would like to encourage these people to be part of this great work of great commission. You know, to work among the social people is not an easy task. And they are one of the poorest people in the land. And so I want to share with these people for them to come on board to support you who offer yourself as sacrifice to come and meet these people in this part of the, the vineyard. So I'm saying to, this, to these people that God may give them the heart 
to support those people in the in the in the vineyard so that they also whatever blessings you receive from the almighty god they also will receive their own reward of their substances their prayer support material support everything they think they can do for these people to get the gospel i think god will reward them for that if, if there's anybody out there that have the passion for for, for evangelism among the susu people I think he can partner with Tiko. I personally, as a Sierra Leonean, can recommend anybody to partner with Tiko. He's creating a good job, he's creating an impact. So how much you pay me? <laughs> <laughs>